Hello. Today, I want to give you a word from Psalms 100 in the NLT version, which is called a Psalm of Thanksgiving. Shout with the joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him, singing with joy. Acknowledge that the Lord is God. He made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good. His unfailing love continues forever. And his faith. I want to talk to you for a few minutes about being thankful. This week before Thanksgiving, um, amid everything else that is happening in the world here in the United States, um, it's that time of year again. The question I have is, what do you think when you think of Thanksgiving? Eating? football, long weekend, shopping, history, family, get-togethers. Thanksgiving is much more than any of this. True Thanksgiving is not just a day for food, football, family, get-togethers. It's not just a holiday every fourth Thursday of November. For the people of God, Every day ought to be a day of Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving Day is a distinctive holiday. It doesn't um, commemorate a battle or anyone's birthday. It is simply a day set aside to express our thanks to God. You know, after some research, I found that in 1789, George Washington made a public proclamation saying that It is the duty of all nations to acknowledge the providence of Almighty God, to obey his will, to be grateful for his benefits and humbly to implore his protection and favor. He recommended and assigned uh, Thursday, the 26th day of November, 1789, to be a day of Thanksgiving. Imagine that. Think about this, long before uh, Washington's proclamation, uh, we find people offering up thanks to God. In the Old Testament, right here in Psalms, right, we find a song of thanksgiving. And that's what it's titled. It is an invitation to join with others to acknowledge the great things that God has done Not only does Psalm 100 call us to praise the Lord with thankfulness, but it also describes to us the nature of thanksgiving. In the Psalm, we find five words that describe the essence of thanksgiving. The first word, joy. Verse one says, shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. We don't have problems shouting at football games, do we? but we very seldom raise our voices in church. Isn't that interesting? Our lives are are meant to be joyful, a joyful call to God. God wants us to get excited about who he is, right? Just this past week, I saw clips from last week's football game. Um, When a team was running, there was much shouting with joy in the stands, in the stadium, right? People um, on Facebook had a lot to say. And, you know, there were little videos of people um, shouting for joy. I've watched movie classics, you know, um, of celebrations when wars ended, um, you know, victory dances and celebrations with shouts of joy and and people running around and hugging each other and 
you know, yes. The victory for us, right, has been won. And because of that, we too today should be shouting for joy. Have, have you ever uh, seen a, a football team, a, a baseball team after the World Series or um, after a tennis match, right? The person who won um, hockey, right? Was that the Stanley Cup? When the city wins the Stanley Cup, the people celebrate. They celebrate. We know how to celebrate. We know how to shout. And what the Psalm is telling us is that we need to shout. We need to give praise to God. Um, the Bible talks about it from Genesis. And when you get to the book of Revelations that we know that Jesus is victorious. We know that he has won the war for us. We already know that he went to the cross and he defeated death. That's reason to celebrate. We should be shouting for joy every Sunday when we come into the house of worship, when we come into the house of, of God. We need to give praise. We need to shout because God has the victory. We need to be filled with joy and shout about it. Let everybody know that we are victorious in Jesus Christ. Let me move on. Let me move on. The second word here is gladness. Verse two says, worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him singing with joy. Worship is not a one day a week event. We need to worship God daily. It is a sacrifice, an offering of joyful songs, not, not just about music. It's about an attitude, right? There are times where people come to church on Sunday morning worship, almost like, I'm going to say it, coming to a funeral service. You know, I'll tell you the truth. We need to come on Sunday mornings like we're coming into a resurrection service. The God that we serve, our Lord has risen from the dead. We serve a living God. And we need to celebrate that fact every time we come together in worship service. We know how to be glad. We know how to celebrate. We know how to be thankful when things are going well. What about when they are not going so well? What about being thankful and worship when things are going bad and when it seems like we're losing. You know, I, I often, I think about the late Whitney Houston. Even amid um, the things that she was going through in her life, she always gave thanks. And I, I think about her because I've, I've saw interviews and different things and she would always sing the song Yes, Jesus loves me. And she would say, no matter where I am right now or how I'm feeling, I'm going to give God thanks because I'm here. She was saying, Lord, I love you no matter what. So another question I have for you is, do you have that same attitude? Do you give God thanks, even in the midst of trouble, even in the midst of uh, 10 feet of snow that is falling here in, in, in Western New York, right? Between Orchard Park, Hamburg, 
Buffalo, East Aurora, these areas around here. Are we still giving God thanks for the snow? Even though we have to get out every couple of hours and shovel or snowplow. Just something for us to think about. And the third word I want to give is dependence. Verse 3 says, acknowledge that the Lord is good. He made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Sheep. Sheep depend on the shepherd. In this verse, we see three attributes of God. He is God. He is creator. He is shepherd. Think about David. David. David understood the assignment. David understood this when he wrote the 23rd Psalm. When we learn that God is in control and we need him, our attitude should change for the better. The problem is sometimes we get tired of waiting, don't we? Could you imagine sheep telling um, David, okay, where's the pasture? How about we're, we're tired and you go get the food and water and bring, bring it all to us, all of us. We don't feel like moving. We don't feel like doing anything. Hmm. I wonder how that would have worked out. We need the shepherd. We need to follow him. We are dependent on God. He created even the, the air that we, we breathe, that, that wuha breath that he gave us when he created us. He knows every hair on our head. He knows every beat of your heart. We, we should be giving thanks to him for being God. We should be dependent on him. Amen. And the fourth key is thankfulness. Verse four says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. We are to enter into his presence with thanksgiving. We are to come to him with praise. Look at, look at the model prayer. It opens with praising and thanking God for who he is, for what he is doing, for what he has done, and for what he will do if we let him. He is our shepherd, and we shall not want. Remember the 10 lepers? One came back and thanked him. Ask yourself, Am I like the one or am I like the nine that did not come back and give thanks? And lastly, the fifth key is gratitude. For verse five says, for the Lord is good. His unfailing love continues forever. And he is faithful. Gratitude should be an attitude that we all have. You know, today I was watching the news and it showed the people uh, giving thanks to the, the Bills players and as they were getting ready to depart for their plane. But before that, it also showed them um, giving thanks and helping them out by shoveling their driveways and snow blowing to make sure that they can get to where they needed to get to on time. Think about that. If we can do that for the bills, imagine if we had that type of attitude of gratitude for God, my Lord. Think of what we can do. Think of how happy God would be towards us. He makes the sun rise every morning. He sends the rains and season. He gives us the, the snow. He causes the ground to yield crops and he provides for every need. We lack for nothing. David understood this when he wrote Psalm 18, when he said, the Lord is my rock, my fortress and my deliverer. 
My God is my rock in whom I take refuge. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I call to the Lord who is worthy of praise and I am saved from my enemies. Remember, our actions will always follow our beliefs. This Thanksgiving, this week, as you continue to, to prepare for family, um, the excitement of seeing people, loved ones we haven't seen in a while, thinking about the food that, that, that you're gonna eat and everything. Um, I want us to also think about those that are less fortunate, that have lost loved ones, that are suffering from illness, and thank God and be a blessing to somebody else this week. Maybe invite someone, a neighbor that you know may be spending the holiday alone and would love to come and sit at the table with you and your family. My prayer is that God will get all the thanks and the praise this week with joy and gladness that only comes from him, with thankfulness and gratitude, and with a heart dependent on him. Amen, amen, amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, God bless you. And until we meet again, I just want to say, Peace be with you. God bless you.